This is the Plaza Theatre Podcast. The Caller by Kate Price I was all of a fluster when the doorbell rang. I thought at first it was that nice girl from the doctor's, but she comes on Thursday, and I knew it was a Tuesday. Tuesdays is dusting, Monday washing, Wednesday hoovering, bathrooms and mopping in the rest of the week. I'm afraid it's only high days and holidays now for the brass, or when I get guests. It's been looking a bit tarnished for a good while these days. i just finished the sitting room, I was having a nice cup of tea and a sit down takes ever such a long time with all those ornaments on the mantelpiece and the ones in the bay window and all. Dusting always puts me in mind of your dad, as that was the day he'd do his boot polishing. On the kitchen table, last week's newspaper down to catch all those little crumbs and pitch black wax and the scuff, skiff, scuff as the bristles went backwards and forwards across the leather. He could get a polish on a boot you could see the stars in. They used to pay him, you know, to do their boots when he was in the Navy. Quite a little learner. Anyway, I just sat down when the doorbell went. It can be a bit of a kerfuffle to get me back on my feet once I'm sat down, although that chair's not bad, it's a bit higher than the others. I called out, with you in a minute, my love to let them know I was on my way just in case they gave up waiting for me then it took me a few minutes to get myself into the hall I left my stick in the kitchen so I had to steady myself on the furniture and the bottom of the banister as I went (laughs) do you know I'm mortified to say I still had my slippers on I suppose they're your dad's old slippers really so on the large side but fine for shuffling around the house I'm a bit wobbly since my fall. What was it? Two? No, three years ago last Christmas. I think I told you. Once I'd got myself into the hallway, I could make out the figure on the doorstep, all distorted by that model glass in the front door. They had one hand up, shielding their eyes on the plane, trying to peer in. I took the chain off the door and opened up. And for an instant, I thought it was you standing there. Then realised, of course, it couldn't be, because you'd have let me know if you were coming down. You wouldn't want to risk me being out if you'd come all that way. In fact, I think this lady was a bit younger than you, probably around the age you were when you last came down. She looked in ever such a state. She'd lost her cat, she said. Had I seen him, she said. Black, with a white nose, apparently, called Smudge. I felt dreadful for her, but I hadn't seen the little mite, not a sign. It's so awful when you lose track of something precious like that. I remember the panic I was in that day I lost you in Beals. Sets my heart pounding as if it were yesterday. It seemed like hours I was running them down those endless corridors of clothes, looking this way and that to try to catch a glimpse of you in that little red coat. And the feeling of relief when I found you. I hugged your little body until I nearly squeezed the breath out of you. It's funny to think how far away you are, living a life so apart. But I still feel that tug like one end of a loose thread. Silly, isn't it? You'll always be my little girl, no matter how old you are. Well, this poor lady had been searching and calling for that blessed cat for days, apparently. I knew what she meant when she talked about how empty the house felt without him. I miss my cat something awful, but I know it wouldn't be fair to take one at my age. 
what will become of the little thing if something could happen to me? Doesn't bear thinking about, does it? So I'm afraid that's put the tin lid on me having a pet of my own again. Anyway, it seems her son was heartbroken about this little one's disappearance. Two of them were inseparable, apparently, and the cat had, she said, been a real comfort to him when his dad left. Kept in company, too, when his mum has to work late. I could tell she was wanting to get on with her search. She kept looking over her shoulder out of the window, but I thought I'd offered her a cup of tea. She looked that done in. Yes, please, she said. That would be lovely. So I shuffled myself up to the kitchen, leaving her cooing over my collection of china cats on the windowsill. And while I was waiting for the kettle to rumble to a boil, I was thinking how I could help this lady. Not with a cat, of course, but I could help her with the family in the way that I hadn't been to help you with yours. It was all right for your Dave's mum and dad. They were on the doorstep. But I couldn't be nipping up to Newcastle every five minutes. Here I was, though, just round the corner from this lady and her son. Maybe he could come round here after school instead of waiting in an empty house. I could even help him with his homework. I used to be quite good at history when I was at school. Tea brewing in the pot, I called out to see if she wanted sugar. My head full of ideas and plans, but I didn't hear a reply. Then a cold draught blew through the kitchen and I made my way back. She left the front door wide open when she scuppered and the bits and pieces from my handbag were scattered on the floor. One of the last birthday presents your father got me. That purse with the sparkly wine glass charm on the zip. They're gone. I sat down in the armchair, my legs giving way under me. Then I realised your dad St Christopher wasn't there either. I'd kept that in my handbag since he passed. He'd carried that medallion all his life. It had been with him wherever he travelled when he was away from us. What a fool I'd been. What a silly old fool. The Mother was played by Sue Martin. Directed and edited by Matthew Ellison. for listening to the Plaza Theatre podcast. Although the theatre is closed, keeping the building maintained still costs money. If you've enjoyed our podcast today, please consider making a donation to keep theatre alive in Romsey. Visit plazatheatre.com for more details.